Okay, almost done. Um, this part should be pretty logical. It should be okay. Um, this is called um, the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle is really just trying to keep track of when the chambers depolarize, when they contract, when the valves open and close, um, and all the way through it is called a cardiac cycle. So before <coughs> we get into the cardiac cycle specifically, I need you to remember the whole <coughs> intrinsic conduction system of the heart. Remember, the sinoatrial node is the boss because it depolarizes the fastest. The atrioventricular node is the underboss, and what the atrioventricular node does is takes the control from <coughs> the sinoatrial node and then doesn't talk to the walls of the ventricles. It plays a game of telephone, and it passes the signal down not to the contractile cells, but to the AV bundle. And then to the left and right bundle branches, we still haven't talked to the contractile cells. And then down to the Purkinje fibers. And the Purkinje fibers are what talk to the contractile cells. So what ends up happening is the SA node causes contraction of the um, atria. And then the AV node is going to lag behind the SA node because contraction of the ventricles isn't going to happen until it gets to, until the stimulus gets to the um, Purkinje fibers. <clears throat> so the heart is of course innervated by autonomic nerves, sympathetic and parasympathetic, but they don't start the heart. They only change the rate of the heartbeat. So think of it like the SA node is the starter and the gas and the brakes don't really do anything unless the car is started. So they don't initiate contraction. The sympathetic and the parasympathetic don't initiate contraction. Only the SA node does that. The heart will contract and relax without any stimulus from the nervous system. And of course, you know that these conducting or pacemaker cells, um, they're uh, a compact mass of them is called a node. And the SA node, the sinoatrial node, just inferior to the opening of the superior vena cava is the pacemaker of the heart because it depolarizes fastest. And even though the AV node was on its way to depolarization, the SA node will depolarize and then flood the AV node with sodium and calcium ions and then make the AV node do um, what the SA node wants it to do. So the SA node depolarizes spontaneously about 100 times per minute. Um, but the SA node is the fastest of them. And then the action potential, which is the wave of depolarization, will move from the SA node across both atria here. And so SA node depolarizes. The stimulus moves across both atria. Then the atria are going to contract. And at the bottom of the atria is the AV node. And the AV node is going to send the stimulus down through the AV bundle and then the left and right bundle branches. And then it's going to send it the Purkinje fibers and the Purkinje fibers are going to send it up the walls of the ventricles. And um, so at the apex, the bundle branches um, branch to Purkinje fibers and the Purkinje fibers are going to be what causes the contractile cells to contract. So this whole business with like the AV node not causing contraction and having to pass off the message to a bunch of different places before it gets down to the walls of the ventricles. This will force a lag time between atrial contraction and ventricular contraction of about two tenths of a second. That's really important because filling is occurring there. And then also what's occurring there is um, the blood is being delivered to the wall, the, the capillaries in the wall of the ventricle, which they don't get blood when they're squished. So you have to relax them because you push blood into the arteries when the ventricles contract, but you actually compress the capillaries of the wall. Okay, now, the so that's how it generally works. Now let's talk about the cardiac cycle. This is basically figuring out the mechanical activity of the heart and how it correlates with the electrical activity of the heart. So we're gonna do chamber contraction, valves opening and closing, and also heart sounds. And it's really, really not as hard as it looks, and also I've got an animation for you. So it is a cycle, and it's a circle, so you could start anywhere you want. Um, with this picture, we are going to start with ventricular filling. When the ventricles are filling, try to make the words make sense to yourself so you don't have to do a lot of memorization. 
with the when the ventricles are filling um, that I want to start with the atria relaxed and the ventricles relaxed and the ventricles are filling. Now, logically, if the ventricles are filling, the position of the AV valves, the bicuspid and tricuspid, have to be opening, open. Otherwise, the ventricles would not be filling. And in a healthy person, you never have both sets of valves open at the same time. So if the AV valves are open, then the semilunar valves are closed. As far as the EKG, what you are going to have for this would be basically P wave through about the Q wave. So what is happening here is blood is continually passively returning to the atria from the veins, superior and inferior vena cava and the pulmonary veins. And as it passively returns to the atrium, as the pressure gets high enough on top of those AV valves, it will cause the AV valves to open. It is not atrial contraction that causes the opening of the AV valves. Atrial contraction happens at the end of ventricular filling. So this stage right here is called ventricular filling, right here, it's called ventricular filling, okay? The AV valves are open, right here. The um, semilunar valves are closed, good, okay? Um, atrial contraction will occur near the end. And what happens with atrial contraction is that occurs after about 80% of the blood is already moved from the atria to the ventricles. And then this squishes the last 20% of blood into the ventricles. Okay, so now we've done atrial contraction, okay? And the ventricles are full. Now that the ventricles are full, they are going to start to contract. And as they start to contract, two things are going to happen in order. The first is they are gonna contract from the bottom and sides up. And when they do that, they are going to push on the bottom of the AV valves. And they're gonna push on the bottom of the AV valves and that's going to close the AV valves. As you close the AV valves, if the papillary muscles and the chordae tendinae are functional, it's going to close and seal. And that is going to be your first heart sound, the blood slamming against those closed AV valves. So now you get that heart sound. And now I'm in this brief period right here after the AV valves closed in which the ventricles are contracting, but blood isn't leaving anywhere because the AV valves are closed and the semilunar valves haven't opened yet. So here's this brief period called isovolumetric contraction. Really, it's isovolumetric ventricular contraction because that's what's contracting. Isovolumetric. Why isovolumetric? Same volume. No blood is actually going anywhere, okay? Because I haven't generated enough pressure to open the, um, open the um, semilunar valves yet. So the AV valves close, and then you have to generate a little bit more pressure to open the semilunar valves. And now I'm going to push open the semilunar valves and cause what is called ventricular ejection, and that should make sense. That is when blood is leaving the ventricles. And if blood is leaving the ventricles, then the position of the semilunar valves must be open, and in a healthy person, that means the position of the AV valves is still closed. Isovolumetric ventricular contraction followed by ventricular ejection, okay? Now, ventricular ejection is going to end when those semilunar valves close. So what's going to make them close? As you, the ventricles contract during ventricular ejection, they're going to push blood into the great arteries, the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. And then the ventricles are going to start to relax and they're going to be empty and low pressure. And blood is going to try to do what it always does, which is flow from high pressure to low pressure. As it does that, it's going to get caught in the cusps of the semilunar valves and it's gonna close them. The semilunar valves are going to close because pressure is higher in the arteries than it is in the ventricles. So when that occurs, you're gonna start your next isovolumetric portion. It's really short. This is the length of it right here. It's called isovolumetric ventricular, just to remind you that it's happening in the ventric ventricles, relaxation. Isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. Why is that isovolumetric? can't get blood to go anywhere if the valves are closed. So you have just closed the semilunar valves and you haven't opened the AV valves yet. So you're in isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. And that is going to end when what valves do what? And we're gonna be right back at the beginning of our story. Isovolumetric ventricular relaxation is going to end 
when the AV valves open. Why do they open? Again, as blood builds up in the atria due to passive venous return, eventually the pressure is going to be high enough on the top of the AV valves to cause them to open. It is not atrial contraction that causes the opening of the AV valves. It's passive venous return that causes the opening of the AV valves. And then you're gonna start the whole process again. Ventricular filling as the AV valves are open, the end of ventricular filling is atrial contraction. The end of atrial contraction is when the ventricles start to contract and they close the AV valves. That starts isovolumetric ventricular contraction, little bitty period. Isovolumetric ventricular contraction is going to end when the semilunar valves open. That starts ventricular ejection. Ventricular ejection is going to end when the semilunar valves close. That starts isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. And that is going to end when the AV valves open and that starts ventricular filling again, over and over again. Okay, so this is the cardiac cycle. I'm about to show you an animation of it as well. The timing of the cardiac cycle is about like this. If your heart rate was 75 beats per minute, that would give you eight tenths of a second for each cycle. And how much time would you spend doing anything? You spend about one tenth of a second with your atria contracted and your ventricles relaxed, not very much time. Um, you spend about three tenths of a second with your atria relaxed and your ventricles contract. So more time with your ventric ventricular contraction. But you spend almost half of each cardiac cycle with everything relaxed because relaxation is super duper important both for um, uh, chamber filling and also for delivering blood to the capillaries of the myocardium. So now let's watch an animation of the cardiac cycle. A single cardiac cycle is made up of the events associated with one heartbeat. Each cardiac cycle takes about eight tenths of one second during each cardiac cycle, pressure changes occur within the chambers of the heart as they relax and contract. As the chambers relax, they fill with blood. This is called diastole. When the chambers contract, the blood is expelled. This is called systole. At the beginning of the cardiac cycle, the atrioventricular or AV valves open. This allows blood to begin to flow into the ventricles from the atria. At the same time, the pulmonary and aortic valves are closed, preventing blood in the pulmonary trunk and aorta from entering the ventricles. Ventricular filling is completed by atrial systole, or contraction. This contraction results from a series of events beginning with the spread of action potentials from the sinuatrial, or SA node, across the walls of the atria. This results in atrial depolarization, which is represented by the P wave on the electrocardiogram, also called an ECG or EKG. Atrial depolarization initiates contraction or systole. Atrial systole is represented by the PQ segment on the ECG. Near the end of atrial systole, impulses from the SA node reach the AV node. At this time, impulses spread from the AV node along the ventricular conduction fibers to the walls of the ventricles. This results in ventricular depolarization, which is represented by the QRS complex on the ECG. The atria repolarize, the walls relax, and they remain in diastole for the rest of the cardiac cycle. Atrial repolarization is not seen on an ECG because it is masked by the QRS complex. In ventricular systole, or contraction, increased pressure in the ventricles forces the AV valves closed. The heart sound associated with the closure of the AV valves is known as S1, often described as LUB. With continued contraction, Ventricular pressures increase until they are higher than those in the pulmonary trunk and aorta. At this point, the pulmonary and aortic valves open and blood is ejected from the ventricles. Ventricular systole is represented by the ST segment on the ECG. In ventricular diastole or relaxation, the ventricles repolarize. The T wave on an ECG represents ventricular repolarization. Ventricular relaxation results in decreasing ventricular pressure. 
During ventricular diastole, blood in the pulmonary trunk and aorta flows back toward the semilunar valves, causing them to close. The heart sound associated with closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves is known as S2, often described as dub. After the aortic and pulmonary valves close, pressure in the ventricles continues to decrease. When intraventricular pressure falls below the pressure in the atria, the AV valves open and the cardiac cycle begins again. Okay, so A that, single cardiac oops. cycle is made up of the events associated. All right, so um, I'm going to simplify to just ask you a, a few electrical events. So basically, um, it's the electrical activity of the heart that causes the mechanical activity of the heart. Um, the mechanical activity of the heart um, has to be coordinated both with each side and atria to ventricle, um, or else you're going to have some abnormalities, and we'll talk about cardiac arrhythmias in just a second. Um, so the mechanical activity of the heart. So in each of these situations, what I want you to do is take an electrical event that I've simplified for you and then tell me what mechanical event um, follows it. And then tell me whether the mechanical event causes the opening or closing of any of the valves. So with the first one, the electrical event is the atrial depolarization represented by the P wave on an ECG. The mechanical event that follows it is what? What does atrial depolarization cause? Atrial depolarization causes atrial contraction, okay? And atrial contraction, again, I want to reinforce, does atrial contraction cause the opening or closing of any valves? Meaning, does the pressure generated by atrial contraction cause the opening or closing of any valves? No, it doesn't. The valve o opens before atrial contraction. The le next electrical event is ventricular depolarization, represented by the QRS complex, um, and represented by the QRS complex. Um, and so my question is the mechanical event. What mechanical event follows ventricular depolarization? Well, it's ventricular contraction, right? So ventricular contraction, okay. And does that mechanical event cause the opening or closing of any valves, meaning does the pressure generated by that mechanical event causing the, the opening of cl or closing of any valves? And it does. The pressure generated by that event causes two things to occur in order. It causes closing of the AV valves and then a pause before opening of the semilunar valves, the pressure generated by ventricular contraction. Okay, and one more little video and then we're done.